We talked this morning about true commitment to God and what it really takes. And we talked about it through the uh, eyes of Joshua in the 24th chapter of that book. And as he challenged the people of this time to let them know that true and committed worship must only be done to the true and living God. And that would bring some challenges, some difficulties. And he said to them that there, you've got some uh, alternatives. You can serve the God of your fathers. You can serve the gods of the Amorites in which we just defeated. We know they're not the true gods. Our God just beat theirs. Or you can be like me in my house. And he said, as for me in my house, we will serve the Lord. And the commitment still reigns today. And God is still calling for people to serve him wholly and fully in a committed fashion. To seek him first in our lives. To put him first in our lives. I made a reference this morning to putting on your big boy britches. And that when your grandma used to say, put on your big boy britches, it was serious times. You had a responsibility to uphold. Okay? And this ain't no time to be soft here. This is big boy time. And the girls had another sta statement that I can't say up here when they were being encouraged by grandma. I share with you that tonight we would take the big boy britches analogy to another level. Okay. And that we would uh, bring it uh, to as much practicality as we could at the same time allowing it to increase our commitment and our faith to God. So tonight we continue that uh, through a series of progressions uh, as we look at our faith and its movement to a certain level. And by the time we get to the end of the message tonight, we would have gone through two to three phases and stages of commitment and understanding what God would have us to do. First off, we will start in the book of Deuteronomy. One of probably about eight sermons that Moses preached um, to the children of Israel um, getting them ready to go into the promised land. Get them ready. Get them ready. As you know that Moses did not enter with them, but he's trying to get them ready for that moment. Is everybody all right? Okay. In chapter 8, we start with the, uh, the caption, Remember the Lord your God, chapter 8. And he goes through a series of events of which God had done for them. And he reminds them of what God has given them and what he has them ready for. Real quickly, verse 7, For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks of water and fountains and springs that flow out of the valley and the hills and the land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees, pomegranates, in a land of olive oil and honey, much as what we still use today. Amen. A land in which we, you will eat bread without scarcity. You will have plenty to eat, in which you will lack nothing. A land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills you can dig copper. People are still digging for copper and gold today. 
For you have eaten and are full, then you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land which he has given you. Now, beware that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments, his judgments, and his statutes for which I command you today, lest you, when you have eaten and are full and have built beautiful homes and dwell in them, and when your herds and your flocks multiply and your silver and your gold are multiplied and all that you have is multiplied. Verse number 18, and you shall remember the Lord your God for it is he who gives you power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. Moses is talking to a new group of people. He's dealing with a new generation, some of which had died in the wilderness. And now we have a new group of folk, okay? Faith builders, if you will. New converts, if you will. They're new to this experience. And so he's trying to get them to understand that when God blesses you, He's already promised this to you, that he, that he swore to your fathers that he would take care of you. It is important that you realize where your blessings are coming from. And you may have gone to your job and got a paycheck, but it is God who made that possible. Okay? And so, as new converts, you need to understand that you ain't doing this yourself. It's God that's making it possible. So don't forget him. Thank him for what he will do and has done for you. He has blessed you and will bless you. And don't forget who he is. Because they were new converts, if you will, they weren't real experienced in handling spiritual things. And so uh, they at this time, being young little toddlers in the faith, if you will, okay, would have a hard time understanding Hebrews Chapter 11 and verse 1, for faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. They needed to have things tangible for them because they were growing their faith. So they're little children in the faith right now. They are being fed accordingly to their knowledge and spirituality and Moses is letting them know it's important for you to know that what all God gives you, you need to thank him for it. I want to draw your attention to verse number 10 and focus on two words. When you have eaten and are full, then you shall bless the Lord your God for the and that's how I'm going to stop right there. For the. For what? I'm gonna, I want you to thank him for the food that you're about to receive. For the food. I want you to thank him for the home you have. I want you to thank him for the, for the, for the job you have. See, those are things you have. Those are things you can see. As a new convert, you're not ready for the things that you can't see yet. You have to have those things that you can tangibly touch. So 
thank him for the milk, honey, and all that he gives you. You're, you're not ready for the next step yet. You still got to eat your vegetables at the kitty table. This is the kitty table. Because you're thanking him for the spouse you have, for the children, for the family. You're thanking him for the church. You're thanking him for the, for the, the, the community of believers, for the family, for the things that God has given you. You, you, you have them, you see them. They're right on the table for the. And that's the beginning stage for the new converts because they haven't grown yet to Hebrews 11.1. 1. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and everything things not seen. They, they, they're not ready for that. So they got to thank him for the. Then we move to another stage. And David helps us with that one. In Psalm 23 and verse number 4, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me your rod and your staff comfort me. You prepare tables before me in the presence of my enemies. Now we go from the kitty table to the big table. This is where you begin to put on your big boy britches at this table. Because this table is for people with big britches who are willing to wear big britches, who are willing to understand that everybody can't sit at this table because everybody don't wear big britches yet. But if you're going to sit at this table, you got to understand that your enemies might be at this table because he's preparing a table before me in the presence of my enemies. So everybody can't sit here because everybody can't handle sitting next to their enemy. See, your boss on your job might be your enemy sitting next to you in the meeting. And everybody can't deal with that. You need big boy britches to handle that one. The lady sitting to your left might be after your husband because she know all your business. And you got to sit next to her. Everybody can't sit at this table. If the enemies aren't at the table, they're close enough that you can see them because at this table, God prepares it in the presence of your enemies. Folk next door to you, Folk in your family, people that you never thought had it out for you are sitting around the table. And some of them may be sitting at the table. This is big boy britches table right here. And everybody can't sit here. See, this table 
is, is for folk who can handle Hebrews 11.1. 1. For faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. See, at this table, you can't handle that because you don't understand that yet. To sit at this table, you have grown enough to know that many of God's blessings will come and you have no idea where, they, where they're at and what's happening to you. You know where they came from, but you're not sure of what's going on because you can't see it. Here, you can't see it. I thank you for the spouse. Here, you thank him even though you don't have one. Big boy britches right here. You, 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 you have to understand if you're sitting at this table what you're dealing with. Okay? And so we move from kitty table to the big table. But we're not done yet because there is another level of growth that we need to have. See, at this table, your prayer requests have become your blessings. Did y'all miss that one? The things you were praying about now are the ones you are experiencing in your blessings. Because those were the ones that Hebrews 1 told us about. Hebrews 11, 1 told us. Substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Now you realize that here. So, where, what table are you going to sit at? What table are you at? But if you come to this table, know that your haters could be at this table. Know that if they ain't at this table, they're close enough to make life hard for you. The ones that are talking in the coffee break room, they ain't at the table, but they talking about you and plotting about what they want to try to do to make life hard for you. Ed Weiner, amen. Okay. All right? But God is able. God is able. And even though I sit at the table, that's an even though table. This is a for the table, and this is an even though. Even though I got the enemies around, I'm still good because God is with me. So, so my enemies might be in presence of my table, and some might be at the table, but thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff comfort me, even though, even though I'm in the presence of my enemies. God is with me. Amen. The next table comes from Paul. And he got to make it hard. In Philippians chapter 1, we find Paul in prison. And if you know a little bit about this chapter, you know that um, there were those that were taking advantage of the situation that he wasn't around to minister to the churches, and particularly here in the case of Philippi, they were making life hard on him, discrediting him, trying to make things difficult for him, and making life miserable for him. And the Philippian congregation was so concerned, they, can, they visited him on many occasions trying to make sure that he's all right, because of how he had been talked about and mistreated. And he, and he says in typical Paul fashion, I'm good. <laughs> I'm in prison and I'm okay. Okay? Not everybody could say that. I, I'm okay. He, he, he says that what I have done is use this situation for the good of the gospel. 
Folk talking about me out there, but I'm in the palace with Caesar and his family in all of the Praetorian Guard, and I could have never preached the gospel to them had I not been here. We can't walk in the White House and said, we want to talk to Kamala and Joe. You don't get that privilege. He's put there in a house arrest and uses it for the glory of God. He takes something that was bad and turns it around for the glory of God. And that's where we need to get to, people, that regardless of what happens to us, there is some good to the glory of God somewhere in it. And make it work to God's glory. Joseph said, y'all meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Yo, boss, meant it for evil and God fixed that thing because you kept trusting that God was going to move in his own time and it takes a, a special growth level to be able to handle that to, to not want to cuss and fuss somebody out turn over tables and lose your mind but to be an example of the believer there must be something about you, girl, that could handle that, because I couldn't. And that's where we got to get to. That's a growth level that everybody can't get to. This one's hard enough, but the one Paul is dealing with is another level of big boy britches. You got to tighten them overalls on this one. Ain't no sagging in the pants on this one. You got to tighten it up. So he says this. Indeed, some preach Christ even from envy and strife, and some also from goodwill. The former preach Christ for selfish ambition not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my chains. I'm in jail, and yet they want to just keep tightening the screws and keep making life hard for me. I can't do nothing to them folk, and they're just going to keep coming with affliction. Can you handle somebody doing that? My wife just told me, she pulled in the Dunkin' Donuts yesterday. And in Willoughby, there's this drive through thing, and you drive through and drive around to the drive-up window. And this truck knew she was in line, because you know how you let the gap open so people can still come through. The truck driver knew and pulled in front of her and got in the way. And boy, was she hot. She was hot. Sister Phyllis was hot, Brenda. She said, I wanted to lay on that horn. And I said, you, don't you get out no, no car no more. You better stay your behind in the car. These people crazy. And she gets to the window. And she had her, her granddaughter in the car. And makes her order. And as she was getting ready to pay, she says, the, 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 the girl at the, at the window says, oh, that man in the truck who pulled in front of you, wanted to apologize. He said he knew you, you were upset and that he was wrong. He wanted to apologize and he paid for your meal. Now, she got her granddaughter in the car. Her flesh wanted to, you know what. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but she, 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 she said, I pray, Lord, in my flesh, I want to, Lord, I want to, but God, let me work in the spirit here, please, God. Prayed that so her granddaughter heard it. And when they pulled up and that man apologized to the cashier and said, whatever she ordered, I got. 
And she said, what would have happened had I lost my mind? And, and, and my granddaughter in the car, and just reinforce, that's how you act when people do something wrong to you. And that was a witness to my granddaughter that, that I was able to, to do the right thing. Okay? We don't always do that, but, but, but there's a growth level that takes place. Because when somebody wrongs us, man, we want to do something to them. But that's when you, that's when you go to spiritual growth level number five. He said, Lord, I want to knock that out, but please. Please. I, I won't kick no more. Yeah. All right. Another spiritual level. And Paul says, even though these people are hating on me and creating a problem for me here, proposing to add affliction to my chains, but the latter, there's some other guys that out of love, knowing that I'm appointed for the defense of the God. There's some guys that's out there preaching it and doing it for the right reason. What then? And here's the verse we're going to focus on. Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached. Okay? And in this I rejoice. Yes, and will rejoice. The phrase I want you to focus on, the two words, in this, we went from for the, then we went to even though. Now we want to focus on in this. In this, that folk want to cause pain in your life. In this, I still rejoice. I don't rejoice because of the pain. I rejoice for what the pain is going to do for me. It's not going to destroy me. It's going to develop me. And because God is going to do something for my good, I'm thankful. Not because I'm hurting, but because the pain is going to produce something in me that never would have been produced if I didn't have the pain. Another level of growth. I told you Paul making it hard. In this, okay, I rejoice. Yes, I will rejoice. Somehow, some good is going to come from all of this. It's going to work out for his glory. So, the last thing I want to do is to show you something. We're going to make this work. It's going to work for your good. It's going to work. This flower, if I were to eat it by itself, I took a piece of this butter and just started eating it. Sugar is good, but if I just eat plain sugar, <laughs> be kind of rough. Be rough, would it? Be real rough. You know baking powder don't taste like nothing. Uh, when you're making something, you know, you may need a little salt. You need a little salt. And uh, I got some vanilla extract. I, I put some, some of these uh, cocoa morsels. And, uh, and I, yeah, you know, some milk. Stirring up. And he's, Paul says later, there are folk that are stirring up some stuff. They're trying to mess with my life. Stirring up. 
Stir it up. When I first married Sister Phyllis, and she was in the kitchen for the first time, and I pride myself in cooking. I can cook. There's one thing she can outdo me in, and y'all know what it is, macaroni and cheese. That woman can make some macaroni and cheese. <laughs> All right, she done made enough for the fellowships here. So I give her that. But the rest of it is, I got that. I got this thing. Okay. One day she was uh, going to do, do chicken. She loved chicken. The gospel bird. She loved us some chicken. And she fly, and I'm in there, you know, trying to be nosy. What's gay? What you doing? Yeah, yeah, you know. And she, you know, flowered up the chicken. But I don't see no grease. So I you want me to get the grease ready? I got my deep fryers over there. I throw the chicken in there. We good, right? We're going to do some fried chicken. So I won't need no grease. I'm like, oh, Lord, I done married the wrong woman. <laughs> that woman don't make some, how she going to make some fried chicken? With no, oh, Lord, it's too late. Hey, Lord, I done married the woman. You don't even know what to, how to do chicken. I said, you sure you don't want me to get the grease ready? She like, you going to let me cook or you going to, you know, I, I said, so I go in the living room, sit down, John, and I come back a couple minutes later. I ain't hearing no, I'm, you know, I'm thinking some, I don't hear nothing. And lo and behold, she said, Willie, I'm making oven fried chicken. Anybody heard of oven fried chicken before? That's the first time I had heard about it. And I said, well, this is probably good because, you know, oil is probably healthy too. Anyway, I, could, I, put some, I, put, I ate some, man, some of the best chicken I ever had. And over a period of time, I quit being nosy in the kitchen because <laughs> I began to trust the cook. Mark, I began to trust the cook. Instead of being inquisitive of you, Conway, I just started looking around and yeah, smelling good, girl. You know, do your thing. You know what I'm saying? And over a period of time, so now, yeah, I work in the kitchen. She, you won't taste him, you know, taste his Ted. John, you won't taste him, whatever. You know, taste of the Lord, for he's good. Amen. Taste the Lord. And uh, the Bible didn't say that all things would feel good, it said all things worketh for the good. It doesn't mean it won't hurt some. Don't mean it ain't going to be hard for it. You know, it says, for we know that all things, not some things, but all things worketh together for the good of them who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. All things are going to work out for the good. Okay. And, and as you Work through all those things in your life and all that stuff is happening to you and it's being worked. Okay? It's being worked. All of these things in them of themselves not going to go down well, Brendan. However, if I put them all together and start working. Hello? Amen? Okay. Then you get some of the wonderful homemade cookies. These cookies are good. I, I told you I can cook. <laughs> told you I can cook. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, mess up my illustration. I just want to show show. So, I know Sister, Sister Brian can't eat none, so I'm going to let, let her look at you. Oh, wait, can you eat one? You, you, can, you, you ain't on the... Okay, go ahead, take one. Okay, go, go ahead. Now, you can't eat in the sanctuary now. Okay, you ain't in the sanctuary. These are for Tans, because this is, this is all about for her. You want to see? These are fantastic cookies. I, yeah, I told you I can cook. Tans, you do what you want with these. Okay, do what you want with these. Here you go. All right, and you, if you want to share... You, well, ain't, ain't everybody now, because ain't but, but a handful. But uh, anyway, all right, all right, okay, okay. So to go, she want cookies. 
You take one? Okay. Yeah, that's right. Just grab one. Just go see. Okay. All right. Here, here, here. These are beautiful. Want one? Take one. Take one. Okay. So in the parking lot, I want y'all to be like, whoa, Brother Willie, these things are good. Ow! Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Sylvia, I got a cake for you coming next week. Okay. I got a cake for you coming next week, Sylvia. Okay. All right. Here you go. Here you go, my sister. No. <laughs> well, give Christine the cookie if you're taking the cake. Anyway, I do that. I did that. Because all that by itself don't go down well. And all that pain and suffering that you're going through sometimes is hard to take. But remember, God is working. He's working it out. So that it's going to turn out to be like one of them cookies. Okay? But we got to get to that point of commitment to God and trust in him. Okay? All right? Are you ready for that? Let's, let's pray for, for God's grace to give us the, that mindset that we can be those uh, Christians that he's calling for in these last evil days. We live in some tough times, man. You know, the man shot that boy. He went to the wrong house. He feared for his life. I guess that's the new phrase. You shoot anybody if you fear for your life. And uh, the person that got shot for pulling in somebody's driveway, and I said, I can't do that no more because I do it all the time. I get lost all the time pulling the driveway. And you know how you go back out, and then I ain't doing that no more because somebody got shot. Anybody, anybody read that? Anybody know, know that one? That happened the other day. These times are difficult, but God is still faithful. God's still faithful, and he's calling on us to be the examples. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight for the blessing of your word, and the blessing of your people, and the blessing to be able to come together to study your word and to grow our faith, grow our commitment to you. And uh, Though things may get tough at times, give us the grace and the mercy and the wherewithal to trust in you. Trust in you to be the cook to work it through. Put all things together for our good. In the name of Jesus, we pray and give thanks. Amen. Amen. The plan of salvation is that you hear the word of God. And the word of God produces a faith that 